my patient is a 58 years old male mr xyz hailing from arur who is a mason by occupation belonging to the lowest middle socio economic class he came with the chief complaints of abdominal pain for the past 5 months and vomiting for the past 2 months patient was apparently asymptomatic 5 months ago following which he has developed pain in the upper part of the abdomen which was insidious in onset dull aching intermittent in course periodic with pain free intervals non radiating aggravated on food intake and relieved on vomiting or on taking medication however for the past one month it is continuous in course and is not relieved on vomiting the patient also complains of vomiting for the past two months which was insidious in onset few minutes after the food intake spontaneous non projectile non bilious not blood stained the vomitus contains undigested food particles but the patient says he can tolerate water intake the patient also complains of reduced frequency of bowel movements which occurs in once which occurs once in 3 to 4 days he also has complaints of fullness after meals he said he used to eat 7 to 8 idlis initially but now he full, feels full after eating 2 to 3 idlis the patient has lost 8 kg in the past 2 months initially he was 72 kg but now currently weighs 64 kg and the patient also has loss of appetite the patient complains of easy fatigability and generalized weakness in doing his daily activities there is no history of hematemesis melina or jaundice there is no history of mass per abdomen ball rolling movements there is no history of back pain no history of abdominal distension chest pain hemoptysis or bone pain there is no history of chronic medication there is no history of heartburn regurgitation or water rash past history the patient is not a known case of diabetes hypertension asthma epilepsy coronary artery disease or peptic ulcer disease there is no history of similar complaints in the past there is no history of any previous surgeries or blood transfusion personal history the patient consumes a mixed diet the patient complain has complaints of reduced frequency of bowel movements and reduced bladder movements he has a normal sleep wake cycle he is not a smoker or alcoholic and there is no history of any other addictions in the family history there is no history of similar illness in the family there is no history of any other cancers in the family summary uh, my patient is a 58 year old male of lower socio economic status who had chief complaints of upper abdominal pain for 5 months which was periodic in nature with intermittent pain free period which was relieved on vomiting or antacids and aggravated on food intake for past one month the pain is dull aching and continuous in course and it is not relieved on vomiting associated with vomiting which was spontaneous few minutes after the food intake the vomiting used to occur it is the vomitus is non bilious not blood stained and it contains undigested food materials there is also history of early satiety and constipation along with easy fatigability and the patient has significant weight loss and loss of appetite and the patient also has decreased frequency of bladder movements there is no significant past or family history i sus- suspect it to be a case of gastric outlet obstruction of malignant origin and i'd like to confirm it by examination wonderful wonderful presentation mr akash okay okay tell me if it is a case of uh... Uh, carcinoma stoma uh, what are the possible what are all the possible complaints with which a patient can present to you sir uh, in case of uh, carcinoma stomach the patient may have a mass per abdomen sir initially okay. then uh, he, he may have uh, uh, anemia asthenia and anorexia sir loss of weight and loss of appetite will be there sir. three a's i wanted to pinpoint yes. three a's uh, looking at the patient only you can make out or suspect is a yes, having sir. some uh, stomach uh, carcinoma how these three three a's that is yes, anemic the uh, asthenic when you check second third thing is the anorexia, anorexia okay. yes. what else then uh, the patient may have complaints of uh, blood in vomiting sir hematemesis mm-hmm. or mel- melina can be there why why is that sir because uh, in case of uh, any gastric carcinoma it can lead to bleeding sir and the bleeding may come as hematemesis or it may pass through the uh, intestine to form melina sir okay 
So, okay, there are so many complaints. I'll make it easy for you. Okay, for the benefit okay. of the members, just remember it as stomach. I'll give you a mnemonic. Stomach. Yes. Sir. Move for most important and most common uh, presentation is silent presentation. Right? It's silent, asymptomatic. Yes. Many times they yes. come in the advanced stage only. The initial stage they won't have any symptoms or any. They won't come to you. Correct? Yes. So first is silent. That is asymptomatic. Silent. Yes, T for tumor. They tumor, can, like sir. you said, they can present with a, a mass. Mass for abdomen. Mass of tumor. Remember, it is tumor. Then yes. ST. O for, o like for in your case, obstruction. Okay. They can come with yes, uh, outlet of obstruction. obstruction. And M for? Melina, sir. Very good. Melina. Why Melina? Uh, These ulcers slowly bleed okay very yes. very small amount of bleed Slow so bleeding. they accumulate yes. accumulate and they cause melina okay melina. that's yes. when the m uh, a for a for anemia those three a's are anemia, anemia asthenia and anorexia yeah weight loss that is asthenia and they can also complain of anorexia sir. yeah loss of appetite okay or early yes. satiety more than uh, uh, loss of appetite they will tell you in the early satiety, that is the classical feature. Okay, like you said, yes. uh, eight idlis at the uh, in the beginning. Now he's having only three idlis. Okay, early satiety. Yes. Uh, then, uh, then C, C, C for C for cachexia. Very good, cachexia, or even they can have uh, constipation. Okay, constipation. Uh, yes. Then C H for H for hematemesis. Intermittent in C. Uh, what is this? Why this periodic pain? Is there in, so periodic, uh, this case? periodicity is because of uh, in case of uh, gastric ulcers, there will be a periodicity which will be maintained, sir. Uh, the patient will have pain for a uh, period of time. And why? Why am I? So because uh, uh, the ulcer will create, sir. Very good, very good. Ulcer will somehow heal, okay, on their own. Yes. So they will have pain-free uh, time. For some uh, yes. okay, some duration okay, and again the ulcer will reoccur because of the etiological cause is persistent. So again they will have ulcer and this will continue. This is why they'll have periodicity. Periodicity. Clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Non-radiating, aggravated on food intake. So uh, how do we clinically differentiate between uh, most important question? Okay, how do you clinically differentiate between gastric ulcer and uh, duodenal ulcer? Yes, sir. Uh, a gastric ulcer will uh, it will be aggravated on pain, sir, and uh, aggravated on food intake. Aggravated ah. on food intake, sir. Whereas in a duodenal ulcer, the food intake will relieve the patient of the pain, sir. Mm. And why uh, you know the reasons, right? For everything, you should know the reasons. Okay, all this theoretical. Yes, I'm not going to details, but please know the reasons for everything. Why there is hunger, pain, and why there is a. Uh, 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 on food intake, the why pain aggravates for everything. You should know the reasons. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. Next. Next point. Next point. Uh, the a patient with duodenal ulcer will be uh, well nourished, sir. He will be either obese or well nourished. Whereas in a gastric ulcer patient, because food intake will cause pain, he will he will have fear of okay. having food okay. and he will be thin built, sir. Very good. Next. And uh, in case of uh, gastric ulcer, there is a uh, Increased risk of bleeding, sir. The gastric ulcers may bleed, whereas mm -hmm. uh, duodenal ulcers usually do not bleed, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gastric ulcer has the higher chances of malignant conversion. Uh, uh, which, uh, which gastric ulcers bleeds usually? Uh, the po uh, anterior gastric, sorry, sir. Posterior gastric ulcers will bleed and the anterior will perforate, sir. Very good. So, which is the most common artery involved? Uh, left gastric artery, sir. No, not really. Uh, this is a major blood supply. It's gastroduodenal uh, artery. Okay. Gastroduodenal. Clear? So, okay. What yes. other points? Good. You're answering really well. And the pain, uh, usually in case of gastric ulcer, the patient will induce vomiting, sir, mm -hmm. to relieve him of the pain. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, uh, that's all. Okay, now the uh, earlier the pain was intermittent or uh, 
now the pain, uh, pain has become continuous why uh, the pain has become continuous maybe it could be because of the infiltration of the malignant cells into the nerve supply of the stomach sir mm -hmm. or the irritation of the viscera may cause continuous course of pain sir irritation and one more thing is the what happens the distension of the viscera okay distension and the usually distension of the viscera okay that is causing okay, the heaviness or the dull aching pain okay yes sir. yes opening or taking then uh, patient comes complains of vomiting for in serious non onset few minutes after why this few minutes after food intake sir so initially should... yes sir initially the patient uh, in a patient of gastric outlet obstruction he will have uh, vomiting towards the evening sir but as the obstruction increases the patient will have vomiting after every meal sir mm -hmm. so what kind of uh, vomiting will be there usually in uh, in gastric outlet obstruction uh, usually in uh, gastric outlet obstruction there will be a projectile vomiting sir okay what do you mean by this projectile and non projectile so in case of projectile uh, there uh, the vomiting will be preceded by retching sir and the vomitus will be uh, thrown away from the place of the patient and uh, in case of non projectile no, 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 you are getting confused projectile will not have this any pre nausea or anything directly they have vomiting okay correct okay, sir. yes sir non projectile they will have preceding retching nausea yeah. okay yes sir okay sir okay. what are the other causes for projectile vomiting One is gastric outlet obstruction, any pyloric uh, stenosis. Yes. So second, any other, any other condition you know? Uh, in case of uh, in case of increased intracranial tension, Very any good. brain tumor there will be projectile vomiting. Sir. What are causes for bilious bilious vomiting? Uh, bilious vomiting it can be due to uh, cholecystitis, acute or chronic cholecystitis, sir. Hmm. And any small bowel obstruction. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, fine. Next. Okay. What's happening here? Please tell why. Reduced sir, frequency patient, of bowel movements. Yes. Why? Sir, sir because uh, the patient, because he is vomiting everything he is eating, he has changed his diet to completely to liquid diet, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he is also not uh, since there uh, since because there is an obstruction. there may be constipation and even because of dehydration the patient has so therefore he may have uh, reduced frequency of bowel movements sir what do you mean by constipation constipation uh, the patient will pass stools either once in 3 days or three times Very in good. a week wonderful so yes sir next one the uh, complete fullness after meals yes sir why because That's the fullness only satiety you meant to say or yes that sir. good bloating sensation he has early satiety sir okay so why why is that early satiety early satiety is because uh, due to the malignant infiltration of the muscular layer of the stomach sir so it mm -hmm. cannot distend sir so mm -hmm. therefore the patient will have early satiety sir. very good the the lumen becomes narrow and narrow so capacity yes. the storage capacity is less okay so yes, patient has lost so what is this significant uh, weight loss significant weight loss is uh, so loss of weight of 10% of the initial weight in 6 months sir okay and the newer definition you know that is 5% in 3 months both okay, okay the older yes, examiners sir. may uh, agree with you but the recent one is 5% in 3 5 months 5% in 3 months yes sir so if they already documented the weights and all then fine you can mention that this is the best better way of presenting actually with the okay. weights or else how do how do you say and one more thing is what's more important here is uh, more than significant it's unintentional weight loss yes that is yes. the been mentioned okay so some people yes. have voluntarily made a lost uh, 10 kg or 20 kg is it so is it relevant no sir. no okay so what is important is more than significant it is unintentional weight loss okay so next he also complains of easy fatigability and generalized weakness in doing why why is it sir so it is because of uh, uh, anemia and asthenia the patient chronic has chronic blood loss anemia is anemia two causes one is chronic blood loss second thing is 
second thing is because uh, there will be iron deficiency anemia sir nutrition 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 yes nutritional and second thing is uh, chronic blood loss okay so yes, this is all the feature constitution features of that fatty weakness yes. next okay. good okay uh, please explain why all uh, you have asked for all these things yes sir uh, amatomesis and melina are uh, seen in uh, gastric carcinoma and also in gastric ulcer and uh, or to rule out jaundice because if there is any metastatic uh, nodules to the liver or any uh, nodules which may be due to carcinoma stomach there may be nodules at the porta hepatis which may compress the common bile duct leading to jaundice uh, mass per abdomen is because of the serosal inversion uh, sorry serosal infiltration which may present as a mass per abdomen and ball rolling movements is because of uh, uh, movement of the stomach against the obstruction if it is visible or not uh history of back pain is because uh, the patient may have infiltration of the uh, malignant cells posteriorly into the pancreas and this will cause lower back ache in the patient and it is not related to food intake abdominal distension uh, due to if there if there is any peritoneal metastasis chest pain and hemoptysis to rule out any metastasis to lung and bone pain to rule out any metastasis to the bones uh chronic medication i wanted to rule out chronic medication because uh, the patient may have some other uh, musculoskeletal conditions like rheumatoid arthritis for which the patient may take nsaids or uh, the patient may also be taking proton pump inhibitors for the uh, ulcers and to rule out peptic ulcer disease i have asked for heartburn regurgitation and water brush anything anything uh, other thing uh, uh, to do with this chronic ppi what is proton pump inhibitors chronic uh, consumption i didn't get your question sir in any way this chronic uh, consumption of medicines like uh, proton pump inhibitors related here related to this case so if the patient previously had any peptic ulcer disease uh, he may be taking this sir. okay he is taking so is it any way relevant for your diagnosis i'm asking no sir it is Not. it is how um, oh. chronic uh, see proton pump inhibitors what it does it will decrease the uh, acid output sir output. so what it is called it will uh, it is act uh, hydrogen pumps sir. no no what is it decreased uh, output of uh, acid Take is called here. Take take or it is the etiology one of the causative yes, risk factor for carcinoma yes, stomach stomachs yes correct yes sir in that case it's important say etiology and it's yes. and uh, chronic consumption of ppis also sir etiology so you should have ruled out next no heart burn regurgitation grd what what do you rule out i want to rule i wanted to rule out uh, uh grd sir heartburn and regurgitation see what has happened is yeah burn. you asked uh, so many questions but all haphazardous that's why i told in the beginning uh, so it should be yes, in the order first uh, okay, you prove that it's a, a stomach origin uh, some uh, disease originating from the stomach then prove that it's a malignant uh, first uh, uh, malignant second okay yes then yes sir. Uh, the go for the if it is if you prove that it's a malignant then look for any uh, metastasis or the spread okay by all yes. something then what may be the probable etiology cause yes okay so you have to here you know, it has all become hepatitis okay sir. correct yes sir okay go in an order so that you will not miss anything okay sir. first uh, it's a stomach uh, uh, then stomach carcinoma then that is again we have to prove that it's malignant then Uh, the features of metastasis then the what may be the probable etiology okay sir. okay okay next yes okay past history what uh, what previous surgeries you are interested to know sir if there is any previous history of uh, gastrectomies or there is previous uh, gastrojejunostomy there may mm-hmm. be recurrence of the uh, uh, disease or there may be recurrence of the cancer which occurs in within 2 years of the surgery mm-hmm. and earlier days this again truncal vagotomy you know earlier days yes. they used to do 
for gastritis they used to do frontal vagotomy that again causes what just i just now i told uh eclorhydria yes okay that it's also can cause so nowadays okay. how do they prevent what do the treatment for peptic ulcers they so uh, they do a uh, highly selective vagotomy sir what is that highly selective vagotomy uh they uh they remove the criminal nerve of la- grassy sir mm mm-hmm. and uh, and what is highly selective what is selective mm mm-hmm. nerve no fibers which are supplying the parietal cells at that level they okay, uh, cut okay not yes. the, the entire uh, not the trunk or the branches and only the, para- the nerve fibers at the parietal cells only so okay they are uh, okay. so which is preserved which nerve is preserved sorry sir you told criminal nerve of grass is rim uh, what is that it should be uh, ligated right so which nerve yes. should be what is a uh, nerve of latter jet uh, i don't know sir oh, oh, fine next okay what kind of diet is uh, dangerous here uh, the patient uh, used to have oh. a spicy diet sir salty mm-hmm. spicy and smoked diets how how it is uh, uh, cause it, causing this carcinoma sir it will lead to the formation of nitrosamine compounds sir, which decreases mm-hmm. the level of antioxidants thereby uh, leading to gastric carcinoma wonderful wonderful so reduced why is this led is bladder movements so since he is uh, vomiting sir for a for two months uh, he he is having dehydration symptoms also mm. sir. so there is decreased urine output sir what is the difference between dehydration and hypovolemia um correct question is correct yes sir no both the same both are same or different a different only sir okay, what is the difference there mm-hmm. dehydration and hypovolemia there are two compartments in the body correct yes sir one is there are three but mainly one is intravascular and one intracellular yes. loss of fluid from intracellular compartment is dehydration yes. loss yes. of fluid from intravascular compartment vascular is compartment. hypovolemia, hypovolemia. okay okay so he's not smoker alcoholic you need not if it's not you need not mention specifically okay. no addiction because addictions are hundreds you can't mention everything if he is okay. addicted to anything you can mention about that clear okay sir. yes sir okay okay oh, why do you ask about uh, in the family the same thing so because uh, hereditary uh, there is a familial predisposition in case of uh, can- can- stomach cancer sir and there it is it usually occurs due to mutation in the e cadherin gene uh, where there is 10% of uh, predisposition in gastric cancer sir and uh, other cancers like uh, colonic cancers or in case in case of lynch syndrome there may be polyps sir. so to rule out that we are asking for this sir. and in this uh, gastritis okay this uh... Uh, peptic ulcers can also be familiar okay sir. next you want to know about the personal history you want to know about anything blood group anything uh, yes sir the blood group a will have a higher risk of gastric carcinoma sir why because uh, in case of blood group a there is increased uh, a mucopolysaccharides which has mm-hmm. increased uh, uh, okay. increased affinity to- yes sir uh, propensity for the carcinogen yeah affinity carcinogenic yes, sensitive for the carcinogens correct yes sir you are excellent yes, man you are excellent okay good thank you so whereas blood group o is more uh, uh, what uh, the people with blood group o are more prone for having peptic ulcer uh, peptic okay. ulcers okay yes. whereas uh, blood group a will have uh, carcinoma Car- carcinoma yes sir okay next examination sir so no no in the summer you see you need not include so many things so many unnecessary things okay yes. 50 year old okay. male okay low socio economic status okay with chief complaints and all not don't need right chief complaints here all those things presented okay. with upper abdominal pain for 5 months and uh, 
uh, all this thing which was periodic pain, which was intermittent, all this one, again, periodic means again intermittent. What is that? What do you mean periodic and intermittent? Okay. Okay. All this thing is yes, not required, sir. necessary. Uh, and uh, having now dull aching pain, continuous, uh, continuous, and continuous in course, not relieved by omitting. So, uh, so this much is unnecessary. So many things are there. I don't want to go in detail. Okay. okay so yes, keep a brief summary. Yes, sir. The only positive re relevant points. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. it's a gastric outlet obstruction. So what is a feature in favor of gastric outlet obstruction? Uh, there is uh, vomiting, One sir. Point. Vomiting and early satiety, sir. Vomit. Early satiety is not a feature of gastric outlet obstruction. Uh, yeah, vomiting. As soon as he eats something, he will have within few months, correct? He will have vomiting. Yes, sir. Correct. Let us see more favor of gastric outlet obstruction here. So what are the features of okay. malignancy here? Malignancy features are starting from the age of the patient and uh, there is a sudden uh, loss of periodicity in the pain and mm -hmm. uh, there is also presence of early satiety. The patient has a significant unintentional weight loss. Mm -hmm. All this can happen in benign condition also, right? There is loss of appetite also. Sir. Loss of appetite. Uh, gastric ulcer? Mm -hmm. Chronic gastric ulcer? Yes, sir. Uh, causing cicatrization and all this. Or the, uh, weight loss, everything can be there, no? Yes, sir. So at this juncture, can you really make out whether it's a malignant or benign? Just with some, uh, what is that, weight loss is there, loss of appetite is there. No, you can't. Okay, sir. Correct? That's why I told. Yes, sir. Always okay, have, sir. Okay, don't uh, just uh, jump onto conclusion at level of history at least. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mass for abdominal kind of graveyards. Okay, it's a, okay uh, that's why it's called Pandora's box or magical, magical water, uh, box. We really don't yes. know what's happening inside. So let's keep your uh, uh, what diagnosis at the end of the uh, okay. examination. Yes, sir. It's, it's, this is not a very straightforward case like a hernia or a breast lump or thyroid. Okay, mass for abdomen yes. is really, really, relatively tricky ones. Yes, sir. Next, examination. Yes, sir. The patient is conscious and oriented to time, place and person. The patient is moderately built and nourished and is thin built and uh, uh, he has a BMI of 20 kg per meter square. He also has signs of dehydration such as his skin turgor is lost. He has a dry tongue and there is decreased urine output. The, the patient has pallor, but there is no ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, lymphadenopathy or edema. There's no fullness in the left side of the axilla or uh, left side of the neck. The patient has pulse of 86 beats per minute, minute, which is full in volume. There is no specific character in the right radial artery. The patient has a BP of 100 by 70 millimeters of mercury in the right upper arm with the patient in, patient in supine position. The patient has a respiratory rate of 16 cycles per minute, which is abdominal thoracic in type, and the patient is afibrile. So here is the build. Build is very important. Build and the yes. nourishment very important. Okay, And uh, yes. yeah, dehydration you are told. And the failure is there. What is this no fullness in the left axilla or left neck? I am looking for a virtuous node and a Irish node, sir. Mm -hmm. What is this virtuous, virtuous node? Virtuous node is the uh, enlargement of the left supraclavicular lymph node on the left side, sir. Mm -hmm. It is also Why? known as troitus sign. So because uh, the malignant cells from the stomach will enter into the cisterna chile and through the esophageal hiatus, it will enter the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct will enter the uh, uh, internal jugular vein at the junction of internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. Due to the increased uh, large size of the malignant cells, there will be retrograde flow of the malignant cells into the uh, virtuous node cell. Nearby uh, adjacent uh, lymph node, that is left supraclavian yes, lymph node. Yes, sir. Retro uh, reflux, because it cannot yes. pass, the malignant cells are so big, it cannot pass to the capillaries. So it gets yes, reflexed. Back to the yes. nearby whatever lymph node. That's why only selectively left uh, supraclavicular lymph node gets enlarged. Okay. Yes. So yes. sometimes they can have. It's very rare. Sometimes they can have a rare metastasis. To the uh, some cases have been uh, 
uh, this thing documented we can have a left anterior axillary group of lymph node that is called yes, irish, irish lymph nodes. node yes sir okay. good anything else you are told about trosier sign <laughs> what yes, about trosio sign i mean look trosio for trosio sign is yes sir uh, it is the supi, uh, superficial uh, migratory thrombophlebitis sir it is usually seen in cases of uh, pancreatic and gastric carcinomas okay another trosio yes, sign sir. it will be seen in uh, hypocalcemic tetany sir mm -hmm. so can we expect it here yes sir how sir Good. because in case in case of uh, the patient will have a metabolic uh, abnormality wherein he will have a hypokalemic hyponatremic hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis one with more paradox hypocalcemic yes sir Hypo hypocalcemic will also Hypo be yes sir mm. yes sir hypochloremic so hyponatremic hypokalemic and hypocalcemic hypocalcemic yes sir correct hypocalcemic yes. metabolic as alkalosis with paradoxical aciduria will be present sir. okay you know what is that paradoxical aciduria how it happens everything it's very good concept everyone must yes, know sir. okay yes, why sir. everything why there is a hyponatremia why there is hypokalemia Hypo everything yes, is a sir. beautiful concept i don't want yes, to go into detail now okay so okay, sir. everyone must know this is a definite question what is the met uh, metabolic uh, metabolic uh, what is uh, uh, the no, seen in gastric outlet yes, subsection sir. definite question correct so yes, we should yes, know sir. this good next uh, vitals are all okay you can expect because some dehydration is there you can expect some tachycardia or hypotension yes. okay yes. and i don't like the temperature cannot be a febrile all those things you should correct okay, okay. how can a temperature be a febrile patient can be febrile or a febrile how can temperature be a febrile okay, okay. temperature is always 98 99 or whatever it is you should measure and write at least okay. at ugs you can't yes, write sir. temperature a febrile okay next okay this is the Good. picture of the patient sir eh? okay what are the causes for distension of abdomen distension of abdomen may be due to, uh, physiologically after food there may be distension of abdomen sir and uh, pathologically after uh, uh, pathologically in case of gastric outlet obstruction because of chronic duodenal ulcer with cicatrization or uh, a carcinoma head of the pancreas may cause a epigastric mass sir and uh, Sir. Okay, okay. Tell. And uh, in case of gastric carcinoma, there may be a distal gastric carcinoma, there may be a gastric outlet obstruction, sir. In case of chronic pancreatitis, uh, trichobezoar, and uh, that's all, sir. So, in, in general, the causes for distension of ab abdomen are, remember, it has seven Fs. How many? Okay, sir. Seven Fs, sir. Okay, you rule out one by one. When you on examination, you are seeing a distended abdomen like this. So first, yes. one by one, rule out seven Fs, and that will cover everything. First yes. and foremost, most common cause for distension is fat. Fat. Yes. Correct. Obesity. Yes, sir. That is ruled out here. Second thing yes. is the uh, fetus. Ruled fetus. out here. Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Third thing is the fluid. Fluid. Fluid means ascites, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. That is one of the possibilities here. Yes, sir. Fourth one is the flatus. That is gaseous yes. distension. Yes, sir. That's a possibility here. Yes, sir. You're telling some uh, obstruction is there. You're telling. No, you still, we don't yes, know where is the level of obstruction. Okay. So it yes, could sir. be a small bowel obstruction. So there can cause a distension of the gaseous distension of the abdomen. Okay. Fourth. Okay. Yes. Fifth is feces. What is feces? Yes. It is constipation. It can cause constipation. loaded uh, colon loaded with feces. That can also yes, cause distension. It's also again possibility here. Yes. Sir. And sixth and seventh is sixth is the full bladder. Full bladder. Yes. Full bladder. Even distended bladder also mimic like a distended abdomen, the lower abdomen. Seventh yes, one sir. is the what is that, Akash? Fatal growth. Sir. Fatal tumors. Okay. Yes. Fatal yes. mass or fatal tumor. That's again possibility here. So we have to rule out yes. four again. Out of seven, <laughs> here there are four possibilities here now. Okay, fluid, yes. platus, and uh, what is that? Uh, feces and uh, feces. fatal mass. One by one, we'll rule out now yes. on examination. Next. Yes. Good. Patient's consent has been obtained 
and he is examined in a well lit room the patient is adequately exposed from just above the zitis sternum to the mid thigh in supine position with arms by the side on inspection the patient has a flat abdomen the umbilicus is central and inverted there are no umbilical deposits all the quadrants of the abdomen move equally with respiration there are no scars sinuses or dilated veins over the abdomen visible gastric peristalsis was seen fullness is noted in the epigastric region hernial orifices are normal external genitalia was normal okay so okay we'll inspection we'll finish it off inspection okay so you have covered everything okay. you come back yes sir. okay abdomen first thing is the contour of the abdomen you will always comment about the contour or the shape of the abdomen here is flat contour. abdomen no? not distended there is no local flat abdomen uh, you only tell fullness is noted in the epigastric region then you are telling flat abdomen how can it be contradictory right yes sir hmm you can tell this upper abdomen distension is there and the lower abdomen is supposed to be flat that's better how can you tell okay. abdomen is flat you are telling then again there is a distension in the upper abdomen you are telling okay sir. i'll change it sir hmm? yes sir no, no. this telling see all these are not mistakes but uh, how we in two yes. lines to contradictory statements yes sir that should not happen okay sir umbilicus is uh, what is the importance of umbilicus in your examination sir in case of uh, if there is any metastatic deposits in the umbilicus before that uh, hmm. uh, before that uh, the if there is any uh, free fluid in the abdomen because of hmm. uh, peritoneal metastasis there may be uh, the umbilicus may be uh, uh, inverted shifted. sir and it will be shifted shifted down if there is ascites yes. what is the normal situation of the umbilicus it's midway between the zygis sternum and the pubic symphysis in case of ascites they move shift down whereas in pelvic shift masses down. they shift up up sir yes and in case of ascites there will be umbilicus will be averted and averted yes sir for yes. smiling umbilicus correct Yes, sir. And uh, what is this sign for? It's called Taniol sign. Taniol sign. Yes, sir. You know, no Taniol. Yes, sir. Shifting of this umbilicus up and down. Another yes. thing is, yeah. Then come now. What is the second point? Uh, Why you are looking at umbilicus is the metab metastatic deposits, sir. What is it called? It is called uh, Sister Mary Joseph nodules, sir. Okay. Why is there? What is it? Why there is a selectively. Uh, there is a metastatic deposit in the umbilicus so because the malignant cells from the lesser uh, from the lesser curvature it will come mm. into the lesser uh, lesser omentum and through mm. the lesser omentum it will follow the falciform ligament or ligamentum teres along that it will come and deposit in the umbilicus most of them not able to answer this point okay accurately yes, okay through the ligament of teres or the what is it falciform ligament All spreads in the uh, stomach to the where it joins near the umbilicus. umbilicus. So that is yes. that's why there is a, a deposit near the uh, that's called sister Mary Joseph nodule. That's okay. Uh, next, you have written about the all uh, movement of the uh, abdomen with respiration, the skin or the this thing. Where just with the uh, peristalsis, can you tell the site of obstruction? Looking yes, at the sir. visible peristalsis. Can you tell yes. uh, where is the obstruction? How? Yeah, in case of a visible peristalsis, there will be movement of the uh, uh, peristalsis from the left to the right. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, we can uh, infer that the obstruction is in the stomach. Okay. And if there is a step ladder pattern of uh, peristalsis seen, there is, should be a small bowel obstruction. And in case of visible intestinal peristalsis. There will be a movement, peristaltic movement from the right to the left. Sir. Colonic, the colonic, the right to left. Wonderful, colonic. Okay, wonderful answers. Yes, good. So fullness is noted in the epigastric region. Hernial orifice is uh, normal. External genital normal. One thing you missed in the inspection. What is that? Can you you yourself can make out? Uh. This abdomen is examination, not just the abdomen. It includes the back also, Akash. You need to examine okay. the back. I have. Okay. I can give hundreds of examples where we have missed the important diagnosis just by not examining the back. There is a just a small sinus, uh, just a uh, what? Just a adjacent to the vertebra, and there is a discharge. 
my diagnosis is done what is that okay. i need not even palpate okay. abdomen i just see a discharging sinus uh, uh, in the paravertebral region and my diagnosis is done what is that uh, don't know sir. odd spine cause yes okay cause it's a abdominal tv which is spread to abdominal. the vertebra now and this is vertebral tv is manifesting as a paravertebral sinus okay sir. so i am not just this small example okay there is lot of importance of examination of okay. the back so should not miss inspection palpation both okay okay, okay. Next. yes sir and yes, sir. again you can any visible impulses are there and uh, any pulses is told any uh, dilated veins all those things you can mention okay okay sir. on palpation the patient is asked to flex his hips and knees visible on superficial uh, was there here visible impulse sorry any no, visible sir. impulse was there no visible no so oh. when they expect visible impulses uh there may be a associated hernia may be present so we can see a visible pop up sorry in case of associated uh, hernias no 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 that is cough impulse that is different it's not visible impulse okay sir. that is cough impulse that's different visible impulse means with every pulse there is a impulse is seen yes sir it can be uh, if the tumor is anterior to the abdominal aorta there may be a pulse uh, visible impulse sir. what kind of okay it's a visible impulse is there what type will uh, confirm in a uh, palpation right yes sir so there could be there could be a uh, visible impulse okay if you carefully yes. notice palpation please. on superficial palpation there was no warmth or tenderness and the abdomen abdomen feel is soft on deep palpation a mass of size 4 into si uh, 5 cm was felt in the epigastric region extending up to the right hypochondrium with irregular borders non tender smooth surface hard in consistency i was able to insinuate the fingers between the mass and the subcostal margin the mass moves with respiration and can be moved in both horizontal and vertical directions the mass becomes less prominent on head raising test but it becomes prominent on the knee elbow position and the mass is non pulsatile uh, no other masses were felt in the abdomen succussion splash was positive there is no organomegaly corneal uh, corneal orifices are free and the external genitalia is normal okay, now now the question is okay mass you have explained well yes. now what is this less prominent on head raising test and prominent on knee elbow position what is this so it is to uh, differentiate between a parietal swelling and the intra abdominal swelling we do a head raising test since so there is a mass in the upper carnets test carnets test yes sir okay so now the question is so okay you now you say this is a intra peritoneal right yes sir your uh, inference is intra peritoneal yes sir so if it, it's not falling down it's not becoming prominent on knee elbow position yes sir what it does mean uh, it could be a retro peritoneal mass sir. only yeah uh, right, peritoneal it cannot be peritoneal uh, mass sir uh if it is other hand it will infiltrate to the uh, uh, posterior structures yes sir then it will be uh, if it is other hand to posterior structures like the pancreas then it will be less prominent sir, on the elbow position correct it's the thing you see yes I'm, sir for your undergraduate level is more than enough but always think 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 why it's happening like this okay. what is this everything for every point think before you ink if you have okay. written something means you are committed you should know yes. everything about that okay sir. and non pulsatile what you are expecting in a in a intra abdominal you are telling in the intra abdominal what your pulsatile mass you are expecting sir it could be a uh, abdom abdominal aorta aneurysm can be present sir hmm it could be, it, it has a expansile uh, pulsatile retro peritoneal not intra peritoneal you are telling it's a yes, sir. Uh, so you are telling it's intra peritoneal mass yes sir, it is intra peritoneal sir hmm then you should written it separately there is no 
uh, pa, what uh, there is no what a uh, visible impulse or palpable impulse in the epigastric region that is fine then i'll ask you what are the types of impulse then you will tell okay. expansal impulse and transmitted impulse transmitted impulse okay, here we can get transmitted yes, type of impulse that's from the yes. pulsating aorta if the mass is overlaying the aorta then it can transmit the aortic pulsation aortic pulsation yes. that's how you can't just write it's a non pulsatile mass okay sir no other masses what no other masses what other masses you are expecting uh this like uh, if if there is any met- metastasis to the liver no organomegaly no organomegaly hmm? no organomegaly so succussion splash have you really done succussion splash in your case yes sir what is the prerequisite for succussion splash sir we so should ask the patient we we should ask the patient to drink a glass of water sir mm-hmm. and uh, we must keep our bell of the stethoscope or even the hand is kept on the epigastric region sir mm-hmm. and we give a, a slight shake we slightly shake the patient and we can feel if there is any gurgling sound in the epigastric region sir that i even if you do it on me also i will also have the same so uh you uh, make me drink water and you shake me you even you will get a gurgling sound on me also maybe yes sir so that means uh, i also have gastric outlet obstruction no sir we should uh, wait for the gastric emptying also sir. what is the gas normal gastric emptying time 3 to 4 hours sir it's for solids for liquids it's almost 2 yes. hours 2 okay. hours yes sir okay fine hmm? so that's why be careful while telling all those things hmm? yes sir not wrong okay not wrong you can still substantiate you can still substantiate okay why there is a, yes. a, a succussion splash because there is a distension of abdomen okay. distension of normally there is yes. no distension so there cannot be well heard normal okay. stomach no organomegaly yes. then hernial orifice is intact not free hernial okay. orifice is intact and external genital is normal and back is also normal on palpation okay. renal angles okay. spine everything on palpation is normal next yes percussion on percussion on percussion there is a uh, impaired uh, normal resonance over the abdomen but impaired resonance is uh, felt over the mass there is no shifting dullness or fluid thrill the liver span was about 12 cm and the upper border of the liver dullness is noted in the fifth intercostal space sir. what is this normal resonance over the abdomen what kind of uh, uh, dullness uh, what kind of uh, note you get on the stomach usually We okay you usually get it in the abdomen no? okay 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 fine fine sorry sorry okay normal yes. resonance over the abdomen except for the that uh, liver dullness splenic dullness yes. uh, whatever and what is this impart yes. resonance over the mass so because uh, it is an intra abdominal uh, mass there will be impaired resonance on percussion sir whereas if there is any uh, if the mass Uh, lies behind the colon there will be a uh, resonant note over the mass resonant only it's not impaired it will resonant if a colon is there because above, of a stomach mass is there any colon is there above stomach no sir no. you could palpate the mass means that is it is just below the skin yes then Okay, so usually you get altered you resonance get because yeah. there are two media. Okay, there is gas also okay. there, liquid also there, also there will be solid also. Okay, mass. So you get altered resonance. Okay. Okay. Altered resonance. We don't write okay. this. No shifting dullness or fluid thrill. When do you get fluid thrill? Uh, if there is a, a free fluid in the abdomen for more than one point five or two liters. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. In a child, uh, children also 1.5 to 2 liters, sir. No, sir. For everyone, it's 1.5 Not to 2 liters, sir. No, sir. No. So then, what's the criteria? Fluid thrill is seen in only one condition. It is 10 societies. 10 sir. We don't know the quality, but only 10 societies only you get fluid thrill. That should be the criteria, correct? Is there a yes. society seen or you a lot of distension is there in abdomen? No, sir. No. Then what is possible? Term? Then what is the need to write fluid thrill here? Okay. That means that. to have knowledge but no application shifting the no instead of shifting the less fluidly you can write 
there is no evidence of any free fluid in the abdomen okay sir clear yes okay. sir okay. next on auscult of scraping test there is a change in the note heard when the scraping below umbilicus there is no arterial blue or bruy or venous from his heart sir this mainly a auscult percussion test mainly done to yes, do, uh, for the distension of the how much it is distended distension of the abdomen there is no yes, us general that time they were dependent on this but these two important tests they will be asked in the exams what is uh, succussion splash and what is auscult percussion uh, not percussion. just knowing yes. the theory part of it but you should know how to demonstrate also many of you will yes, be caught when asked to demonstrate you might have not done during your clinicals but in exam suddenly you'll be caught so don't do that practice okay for okay. the patient so yes, okay what is bates test so bates test is done uh, to uh, find out if there is any pseudo cyst of pancreas how um i don't uh, don't remember what do you do in bates you put a rails tube okay sir rails tube okay nasogastric tube and uh, yes, then you can palpate the rails tube over the just below the skin subcutaneous skin yes. why yes, because sir. behind what is there big uh, what is the pancreatic uh, pseudocyst is there that is pushing the yes, stomach anteriorly so stomach is almost collapsed and it is just below the skin okay sir. so rails tube is inside the stomach so if you just uh, So palpate the skin. You can feel for that. Uh, what is that? Uh, Rails tube. It's called Bates test. Bates test. Okay. okay. Next. Next. On digital okay, record examination. Hmm. On why you done this? Digital record examination. The rectal. Sir, to rule out if there is any rectal vesicle pouch deposit, sir. Bloomer shelf is ruled out. Ruled out, sir. Hmm. Okay. Also, any uh, constipation? Any constipation is there? Okay, any hard feces are there because of this dehydrate? Okay. Also, you can make that. Okay. Uh, okay. And the age, yes. well, you can also look for any fifty-eight unlikely, but still prostate megaly can be made out with the uh, digital rectal examination. Okay. And immediately you should take out and yes. see. Look for the staining on the glove. Any blood stain? Any stain? Yes, sir. That's important. Other systems are yes. uh, essentially normal. Okay. So next, yes, next this is my summary, sir. Okay, okay, next. The patient is a case of uh, gastric order of section most probably due to carcinoma of the stomach. Uh, okay, Some. now what are the differential diagnoses? So for this case, uh, the differential diagnosis could be a uh, chronic. Uh, diurnal ulcer with cicatrization, sir, and uh, there could be a, a chronic pancreatitis may be present in this patient, sir, and uh, mm -hmm. there could be a gastric lymphoma or a gastrointestinal stromal tumor may be present, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And any malignant etiology that is done, you need not do tell the pathology or pathological diagnosis. Anything else? Okay. Sir. Carcinoma? Any anything else? Any other carcinoma? Uh, carcinoma head of the pancreas may be present, sir. Okay. Anything? Any other benign conditions? Have you asked for any uh, his mental status? Anything? Uh, no. Uh, like trichobezoar. There is no trichobezoar or phytobezoar, sir. His mental status is stable. Okay, fine. What is um, Wilkie's disease? Wilkie's disease is uh, compression of the superior mesenteric artery, sir. Uh, the, usually, the angle between the aorta and the superior superior mesenteric artery is bit forty uh, five degrees, sir. If the degree, if the angle becomes less than twenty two degrees due to sudden uh, weight loss, there will be uh, Wilkie syndrome or also known as Nutcracker syndrome, sir. Compression of superior mesenteric artery or duodenum. Duodenum, sir. Due between, to decrease in angle, sir. Between what and what? Uh, superior between... mesenteric artery and the uh, superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. Sir. Not aorta. Posterior, what is there? Um, Vertebra. Yes, sir. The okay. so third part of the duodenum will be compressed. Yeah, exactly. Third part of the uh, duodenum. 
So yes. okay. Uh, next, uh, next. What is how do we manage this case? Sir, first of all, I would like to resuscitate the patient. So sir. there are okay, because... gastrointestinal obstruction, most likely gastrointestinal stomach, and with, there are no features of any metastasis. You can write. Yes. Okay. Sir. What is early gastric carcinoma? Early gastric carcinoma is defined as uh, carcinoma involving the mucosa and the submucosa, irrespective of the nodal status. Sir. Very good. Very good. So how do we manage this case? So in this case, because uh, since there is gastric outlet obstruction due to a distal growth, I would like to do a lower radical gastrectomy. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, Akash, you, so far you answered really well. Now you are, I think, hypoglycemic or sleepy, I don't know. <laughs> don't suddenly go into the surgery, man. Okay. There are so many things first, to be done. Yes, sir. Management okay. means... First. Investigation first, and treatment. Investigation. Yes. Okay. Sorry. You still cannot yes, confirm. You do you have ultrasound eyes and uh, what to say? Huh? Yes. So we have to confirm. What is the investigation? So that's a tricky yes. way of asking. Instead of asking you uh, what are the investigation okay. you do, then uh, how do we go about? How do you manage? We know you. This is the common okay. mistake you do. That's why we, we want to put a trap for you. That's why we ask like that. Okay. Okay. okay? So Don't first fall of into all, I trap. would like. Okay. Yes. What is the investigation you want to do? Uh, my uh, preferred investigation would be a upper GI endoscopy, sir. Mm -hmm. Why? And then uh, uh, so that we can be able to visualize the lesion and also take a biopsy, sir, and also see the both extent sir? of the lesion. Yeah. Both diagnostic as well as therapeutic also sometimes. Therapeutic. Okay. okay. Then what are the features in uh, uh, upper GI endoscopy? So we can uh, look at the extent of the, the benign and uh, malignant ulcers. Yes, sir. Uh, in case of a benign ulcer, there will be a loss of convergence towards the ulcer. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, there will be loss of convergence in a uh, uh, malignant ulcer, whereas the convergence will be present in a benign ulcer. And in endoscopy, uh, there will be loss of rugae in the malignant ulcer, whereas the rugae will be present in a uh, benign ulcer. Uh, the size of the ulcer will vary, sir. Uh, more than 2 centimeters or 3 centimeters, it is a malignant ulcer. Whereas uh, less than that, it will be a usually it is a benign ulcer, sir. And if the ulcer is uh, placed on the greater curvature, it is okay, a malignant okay. origin. Unless the theory, otherwise, theory you read. What are the drawbacks of this upper, upper yes. G endoscope? What are uh, the drawbacks? You understood? Sir, in yes, sir. In case of uh, diffuse type of cancer, we cannot be able to diagnose the case. In case of linitis plastica, we may not be wow. able to diagnose. Why? Sir, because uh, there will be a loss of distensibility of the stomach, sir. That's why we cannot diagnose. No. Why cannot? Uh, see. You know, I'll give you an example like uh, linitis plastica, gist, uh, uh, lymphomas, carcinoids. All this we cannot yeah. diagnose through upper G endoscopy. Why? Because the mucosa remains normal. All this happens in the submucosal plane. Yes. Mucosa. Correct? Yes. Sir. Huh? Correct. Correct? Yes. Huh? That's why. Yes. Okay. Sir. So yes. before uh, upper G endoscopy, what do you want to do? So we can do a barium meal study, sir, in such no, no, cases. Stomach wash, that's important. Okay, Stomach wash is... Stomach is gastric lavage. Yes. Stomach lavage, gastric lavage is important. Okay. Or, or otherwise, all the yes, food sir. particles, very, you cannot visualize anything. What are the complications of yes. uh, upper G endoscopy? So there may be uh, uh, bleeding, sir, due to mm -hmm. trauma. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Next. Further uh, trauma can lead to what? Uh, it can lead to perforation, sir. Iatrogenic okay. perforation may occur, sir. Okay. So this mainly these two. Okay. So yes. uh, what other investigations? One is upper G endoscopy. Next. Next uh, to uh, stage the disease, I would like to do uh, ultrasound of the stomach, sir. Mm -hmm. In okay. ultrasound, like we can look at more status and all you can make out. Okay. Next. Yes. Then we can we have to do a contrast free and then that you can make out with the USG. Yes, sir. Next. in the USG, uh, with the help of contrast and then CT, we can measure the uh, tumor thickness and whether it is adherent to any other structures, sir, which will 
uh, determine its resectability. The gold we standard investigation. Sir? What is the investigation of choice? Uh, upper GI endoscopy, sir. No, no, for this, what is that? Uh, you told uh, uh, the spread uh, and all to look for. So, uh, contrast and then CT of the abdomen and pelvis and thorax. Sir. That is for distant uh, metastasis and all. What about the local spread? The stomach? Uh, endoscopic ultrasound can be done, sir. The best. That's the best. Okay. Yes. Yes, so uh, all the five layers can be differentiated. Very differentiated. Well. So what the extent of the involvement you can make out okay, through EUS. Okay, yes. what is the role of X-ray? So uh, X-ray we can uh, look for any chest metastasis, sir. But nowadays we do it with C C T of the chest, sir. Correct. X-ray means only chest X-ray intel. Okay, sir. X-ray is both play a uh, Plain X-ray and contrast X-rays also there. Yes, sir. In case of contrast, we can do a barium meal study, sir. Mm -hmm. Using? Using uh, barium sulfate contrast, sir. Very good. Very good. I wanted that word because barium just as it, uh, as it is, is a very neurotoxic substance. Okay. Yes, sir. But barium yes. sulfate is a very soluble substance. Okay. Yes, sir. Micro crystals of barium sulfate we use, but not barium phosphate. Remember, it's barium sulfate. Okay. Barium sulfate. We ask them yes. to bring the solution of the micro crystals of barium sulfate, and then we, using fluoroscopy or x ray, we take uh, the images. What are the yes. features? You can sir, we can uh, uh, delayed uh, emptying, so we can see, sir. And if there mm -hmm. is any ulcer, uh, the ulcer can be delineated, sir. And we can also see the distension of the abdomen, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and we can also see. Uh, what next? But line dysplastica, what kind type of deformity and all will be there? It's best. Nowadays, the indication for this thing is mainly that uh, line dysplastica only. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, we can see a teapot or hour glass deformity, sir. Okay, hour glass contracture. Very good. Next. What the other. Uh, uh, indications for uh, barium meal nowadays? Um, Only two, three indications are there. One is I told you, linates plastic. Yes. Second thing, any gastro uh, jejunal gastro fistula. Okay, sir. Okay, any gastro jejunal yes. fistula. And one more yes. thing is the hiatus hernia. Hiatus hernia. Okay, sir. Okay. Remember, it's gastro yes, jejunal only, it's not gastro colonic. Gastrocolonic okay. cannot be for that. You need uh, enema, barium enema, because colon is a high pressure zone. From from okay. there it passes the uh, fluid to the small bowel. Okay, or the what is the stomach? So okay. for gastrocolic you need barium enema. Barium enema. Gastro jejunal you use this uh, barium, barium. barium meal. Okay, okay. that's uh, about the barium. Read, read very important. And this X-ray will be kept in your viva, right? Akash, you have yes, this. Images yes, in your yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. We had okay. Sir. So you will have that tail appearance, that uh, parrot beak appearance. All these uh, usually they keep as spotters in your viva. So you should not yes, miss. Sir. So one uh, definitely okay. one barium uh, study will be there. So read everything about barium studies, different barium studies. So next, what's okay. the other any blood investigations you want to do, or in tumor so, markers? Uh, we can do a casino embryonic antigen tumor marker can be seen, sir. Okay, what's the treatment? So, since this is a distal growth, I would like to do a lower radical so, gas. One, one, one again, one trick here is one trick here is before directly yes, moving on to the surgery, you should tell that one answer, sir. I need to, I want to optimize the patient optimize before the, yes, any sir. further treatment. First, here is the yes. optimization because he's continuously vomiting, there's a low BP, there's dehydration, all so many things, anemia, so many things are there. You can't directly. Uh, come or uh, go for surgery. Okay, surgery okay, will be successful, but patient will be dead on table. Okay, sir. so okay, so yes, you need to optimize the patient. That's uh, these are all the tricks. Yes, sir. The, which uh, 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 examiner will ploy on you. Okay, so yes, sir. So optimize. How do you optimize the patient of gastric outlet obstruction? So since the patient is dehydrated, I would like to start him on uh, normal saline, sir, IV fluids. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have to. Uh, we have to uh, correct the deranged fluids and electrolytes, sir. 
and mm. once the urine output is normal we have to give a potassium chloride sir mm. and then since the patient is also anemic and he will also have hyperproteinemia we should start him on uh, uh, total parental nutrition sir mm. okay anyway uh, he is optimized then what next then we should plan for the surgery sir what uh, sir uh i want to do surgery low... or you want to do any anything else before surgery uh what is role of chemotherapy in the role of new adjunct chemotherapy yes so we can give a regimens uh, regimen of cisplatin atriamycin or epirubicin and do- docetaxel sir to downstage mm-hmm. the disease and decrease the size of the mass first three cycles is usually given sir initially then uh, if the mass is downstage then we can go for the surgery sir and following the surgery the remaining 3 to 4 cycles should be completed sir okay surgery what do you do what surgery you do sir uh, it, 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 it is a lower hmm. sorry sir correct tell me for distal growth distal mass you do yes sir for a distal mass we do a lower uh, su- subtotal radical gastrectomy hmm. with a proximal margin of uh, 6 cm and a distal margin of 1 cm with mm. d2 lymphadenectomy and uh, reconstruction with uh, ru and y gastrojejunal anastomosis sir. very good mm. for proximal ones proximal for proximal cancers we do a total gastrectomy sir okay and leave it like that no sir we do a, a gastrojejunal anastomosis there is a gastro you don't total gastrectomy then it is a gastro esophageo uh, urinary okay. gastrectomy yes okay fine what is d2 gastrectomy sir uh, in case of d2 gastrectomy we remove the stomach along with the mass and uh, we remove the lesser yes sir d2 what lymph d1 nodes, what is d2 uh, what is d3 yes sir d1 consists of lymph nodes from 1 to 6 stations sir D2 consists very of gastric, seven to eleven. Very gastric lymph nodes. Yes, a gastric lymph nodes, and then D2 consists of uh, lymph nodes surrounding the major vessels, sir. And D3 consists of metastatic nodes. Sir. Okay, good. What is the difference between irresectability and inoperability? Sir, uh, in case of uh, inoperability, uh, so the question will be the, for you. Only UGs. The question will be what are the signs of inoperability? Yes, sir. what are the signs uh, signs of inoperability are uh, presence of ascites sir and uh, presence of uh, krukenberg's tumor the uh, and other uh, lymph nodal enlargement like the troches sign sister mary joseph nodule and uh, fixity of the mass to other ends uh, of other ends of the mass to the uh, surrounding structures sir and uh, irish nodule and uh, so in one line what uh, you can say any signs of distant metastasis me- distant metastasis so one line yes, okay any signs of distant metastasis are there or if it is uh, adherent or uh, if it is infiltrating into the some vital organs if you can remove yes. like skin or uh, pancreas it's okay if it is into aorta and all can you remove no sir it's become irresectable yes sir clear yeah? any role yes, of sir. radiotherapy uh radiotherapy i don't know so we don't give usually radiotherapy in uh, carcinoma stomach because all the radio resistant uh, no no okay it's usually radio resistant yes. and some radio sensitive organs are behind that behind okay, the stomach bed so that's why we don't yes, give uh, radiotherapy in case of uh, carcinoma stomach this role of immunotherapy yes. but nowadays immunotherapy okay. is coming okay some drugs are okay so yes, What are the complications after uh, this surgery? Uh, complications. Read like... about all the things. I am not going detail. What is Bill Ross one? What is Bill Ross two? What is the how it's yes, better sir. from how it's better? Ru and Y is better than all those. What are the common yes, complications sir. of Bill Ross one and two? Okay. okay. All those things. Yes, sir. Read. And what are the complications okay. of this again? Ru and Y gastrogenostomy. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, all about surgery. How much length? What is the uh, length of the ru uh, limb you keep? Why is that so? Why to leave forty yes. centimeters of raw limb? Okay, to okay, uh, prevent a reflux uh, or the bile reflux. Yes. Okay, and uh, yes, all the things. 
what is uh, emd sir what is emd uh endoscopic uh emr emr early uh, EM, uh, endoscopic mucosal resection sir okay it's for early uh, early cancer early gastric cancer differentiated yes. and very small uh, less than 2 cm in size only involving mucosal and submucosal you can do early mucosal resection early, early mucosal okay. endoscopic mucosal, endoscopic mucosal. mucosal. okay yes sir. that's the one and uh, what are the palliative surgeries you know so palliative we can do a divine exclusion procedure procedure sir and uh, pyloroplasty can be done sir. palliative mainly three things one is to improve the nutrition level that is uh, 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 okay to feed him either by stenting the stomach or the pylorus or by doing some feeding jejunostomy okay that's the one way of this thing second thing is mainly to relieve the vomiting okay yes, and sir. third thing to relieve the pain yes sir. 